Okay, I get to meet everyone. I get kvittel. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Tonight's Sudas Hashanah Raba is dedicated by my dear friend, Chavar Toiv, Shachin Toiv, Roifei Toiv, Dr. Menachem Fuchs, Umeshpach Toiv, Lekavad Hashanah Raba, and Le'iloi Nishmas, Tzadikim, Kedoshim, and it's a very big covet to have Rabbi Nachem as my neighbor, family of Oivde Eloikim, Talmidei Chachamim, Yerei Shamayim, and you know one of the most important things in life is to have a Shachin Toiv, a Chaver Toiv, and a Roifei Toiv. So Baruch Hashem, I have all three in one, and uh, we're Mavarich Rabbi Nachem and his whole Mishpacha. They should have Gezint, Nachas, the Kedusha. Bimali Hashem Kamashalai Slibchem Latoiva Adbias Goyal Tzadak. Also, tonight is dedicated by my dear friend Rabbi Isaac Yasolovsky, Loyule Nishmas Zeda. Rabbi Isaac's been coming to the Shir Moso for over 10 years, and we're Mavarch Rabbi Isaac with good health. Gazint, Parnas Tabarevach, Bracha Vatzlacha Adbias Goyal Tzadak. For many years on Hashanah Rabba, Guess what we spoke about? We spoke about Hoshana Rabbah. You know, it's, it's a rather unusual choice of subject, but you know. This year, we're going to segue a little bit into somewhat of a new territory, but ultimately we're going to come back to Hoshana Rabbah. Tonight we're going to focus on what Hoshana Rabbah is a preparation for. And we're coming up on Simchas Torah. This year, Simchas Torah has garnered a lot of attention because of what happened last year on Simchas Torah. Let's try to understand what exactly is the Simcha of Simchas Torah and what could we do with this Simcha. The Medrash and Shir Hashirim Rabbah tells us what's the Makar that when you finish a Sefer or a subject, you make a Siyam. What's the source of a Siyam? In our generation, people are very into Siyumim. I, I think when I was a kid, a Siyam once in a Yoyvo you make a Siyam. Now, Every, there's always, a siyum is like the main event. There are siyumim, rent out stadiums, first hockey stadiums, now football stadiums. A siyum is a very big thing. Why is it a simcha when we finish something? Where, where does it come from that when you finish Torah, it's, it's worthy of celebration? What exactly are you celebrating? So I, I don't think it's well known what the source of a siyum is. It's a medrash and sher shiyum. Medrash and sher shiyum tells us the Rebbe Shalom came to Shlomo Amalek. He says, Shlomo, what do you want? You want money? You want health? You want chachma? So Shlomo says, if I ask for money, I'll just get money. If I ask for health, I'll just get health. Let me ask for the king's daughter. If I marry the king's daughter, I'll have everything. So Shlomo says, give me chachma. So Rebbe Shalom says, oh, you want chachma? I'll give you Chachma, I'll give you Ashirus, I'll give you everything. So what did Shlomo HaMelech do? Says the Medrash, if you look at number one, first wide line, Miyad, immediately, immediately. He didn't wait. Miyad, Vayova Yushalayim. Vayamay Lufnei Aaron Bris Hashem. He stood before the Aaron. Vayal Oilois, he brought Karbonois. Vayal Shlomim, he brought Karbon Shlomim. Karbon Oila doesn't sound so happy because that goes straight to Hashem. A carbon shlomim means a barbecue. It means you have something to eat. Vayas Mishta, he made a party. Now, if I were to ask you, what do we learn from the fact that Shlomo made a party after the Rebbe Shalom gave him Chachma? I would have thought we learned that when the Rebbe Shalom gives you Chachma, you should make a party. No, the Medr says that's not what we learned from there. We learned from there, Amar Rebbe Lazar, Mikan she'oisin suda legamra shel taira. From here we learn, if you finish something, you make a suda. The only thing is, Shlomo didn't finish anything. How do you learn from here that when you finish something, you make a suda? If Shlomo would have finished Shas and he would have made a suda, you could say, from here we learn, if you finish something, you have to make a suda. But Shlomo didn't finish anything. He only got a lev of chachma. And then the Medrash continues, Amar of Yudin, Lelamedcha, Anyone who teaches Torah publicly merits the Divine Spirit. Because that's what happened to Shlomoi. You hear this Shlomoi? He taught Torah and he was Zoycha to Ruach HaKodesh. And what did Shlomoi say? Mishlei, Koiheles, Shira Shira. By the way, this might be a new reason why we read Koiheles on the end of Sukkot. 
because the source of Simchas Torah and making a Siyam when we finish something comes from Shloimai. And what did Shloimai do when he finished, when he got Chachma? He said Koheles. So since the Makar of Simchas Torah is that Shloimai Melech made a Suda when he got a Lev of Chachma, and he said Koheles, maybe that's why we read Koheles in close proximity to Simchas Torah. Okay. But this is certainly worthy of our attention, right? So now we learned. What's the Makar of Asiyam? The Makar of Asiyam is Shloimai didn't have Chachma. Obviously he had Chachma before. But the Rebbe Shem gave him a new level of Chachma. He made a great Suda. And from there we learn that if you finish a subject in Torah, you should make a Siyam. By the way, if you look in the Arzarua, Rabbi Yitzchak Avina, he says in our locale, in Shoshnaya, in Spain, they would make Chasen Torah and the Chassan Torah would make a Suda, and now we have the menu of what they served at the Kiddush back in Spain. Avazois, we have to know what to serve. Goose, is that on the list? The, you know, I don't know if it's available for the Kiddush. Goose, Tarnagoylem, chickens, and this is based on the fact that when Shlomo Melch was given a Lev of Chachma, he made a great Suda, and from there the Medrash says, Mikan, Sha'oisin Suda, Legamra, Shal, Taira. And the Arzarua goes on to quote the Medrash we just learned. Says of Yosef, the Makar of Simchas Torah is that when the Rebbe Hashem gave Chachma to Shloima, he made a big Mishta, he made a big Simcha, and therefore when we finish the Torah, we should also make a big Suda and a big Simcha. So the question is, brought in the Sefer Hare Kedem, that how could this be a Makar? that when you finish a subject in Torah, you should make a Suda. Shlomo didn't finish anything. He didn't learn anything. Shlomo didn't learn. Hashem didn't teach Shlomo Torah. He gave him Chachma. So all you could learn is that if the Yibar Shem gives you Chachma, you should make a Suda and you should make a Mishnah. But from where do you see that if you finish a subject in Torah, it's deserving of a Siyam? That's the Kasha. So I want to share with you a series of questions. In past years, we always addressed it one way. This year, we're going to add two more approaches based on a very important insight. Shailas Atshuvas Haradvaz. If you learn the Gemara Miguel Adaf Lamed Aleph, how many Sifrei Torah do you read on Simchas Torah? Two. Vizayis HaBracha. And the Maftir. You read... Um, no, the Gemara doesn't say you lay Bereshit. Not, not one word. Yes, we do lay embraces, but the Gemara says two sevrei Torah, v'zayis habracha and ubayim hashmini atzeres yelachem. Comes the tour, and the tour says take out three sevrei Torah. Number one, v'zayis habracha. Number two, maftir. Number three, bereshis. And we don't do that either. We do number one, v'zayis habracha. Number two, bereshis, and number three, the maftir. So first of all, where did the Torah get this from, that we should take out a third Sefer for Bereshis? Number two, let me ask you a question. Which is more Tadir, Maftir or Bereshis? Maftir. So Tadir, Vesheno Tadir, Tadir Kaidim. We should read Sefer Torah number two should be the Maftir, and Sefer Torah number three should be Bereshis. Furthermore, which one is a Chiyuv and which one is a Minhag? The Chiyuv is the Maftir. The Minog is Bereshis. So what should come first? The Chiyuv should come first. First should come the Maftir and then should come Bereshis. This is the question of the Radvaz, Rav David ben Zimra. Now I want to tell you, the Radvaz did something very interesting. You know, in the times of the Rambam, it's shocking. In the times of the Rambam, the Rambam looked around and he saw people during Chazar Sashats weren't paying attention. Do so you know what the Rambam did? He was Mavatel Shman Esrei. He was Mavatel the silent Shman Esrei. They just did Chazar Sashatz. And it stayed that way for hundreds of years until the Radvaz came along and he put back the, sh the Chazar Sashatz and the Nisan Shman Esrei. The main tefillah is Chazar Sashatz. The Iker tefillah is Chazar, that's tefillah Sarabim, that's tefillah Satsibar. Anyway, I'm just giving you a picture of the Radvaz was. The Radvaz was the Rebbe of the Arizal. Just get his address. No. <laughs> so the, the Radvaz gives the following answer. Says the Radvaz that the Medrash tells us that whenever Klal Yisrael learns and then they stop, there's a Kitrug. The Satan comes and says, okay, they learned very nice. 
But now they're calling it a day. Now they're stopping. Now they're pausing. Now they're interrupting. Now they're going on vacation. Rebun Shalom, you know, the Chesatan will come to prosecute and to instigate. Whenever there's a lull in the action, whenever there's a completion, the Satan's going to come and say, okay, that's it, they're finished. They're not going to learn anymore. So in order to quiet the Kitrug of the Satan, we have to immediately start something new, namely we start Bereshis. This is the well-known reason, that right after Vizoyis Habracha, we immediately start Bereshis. Why? To silence the Kitrug of the Satan. This is a very important principle. Whenever you finish something, you're in big trouble. It's a very dangerous time. So therefore, the Medrash says, Miyad, Miyad, you have to immediately start Bereshis. By the way, the Avudraham, when he quotes over the tour, the Avudraham says, what the tour means is, the second Sefer is Bereshis, and the third Sefer is the Maftir. I, the tour said, the third Sefer is Bereshis. He just meant, not the third in order, the third as the third in terms of importance because the mafter is a chiv and the bereshis is a only a minhag. Okay, so this is a very important idea. That whenever you finish something, you need to start something else immediately. And even though tadir v'shein or tadir tadir kaidem, and even though chiyuv goes before minag, nevertheless the idea that you have to quiet the satan overrides any of these factors. So let me bring to your attention a number of other things we do on Simchas Torah out of concern for this Kitschuk of the Satan and then we're going to learn that it's not the real reason. The Chida, Chida and the Berke Yosef. We all know, does anybody know what Haftorah do we read on Simchas Torah? So we read from Sefer Yeshua. That's the Haftorah is from uh, Yeshua, Perak Aleph. The beginning of Sefer Yeshua. But if you look in Toysvis, Toysvis says, no, we don't do that. Toysvis says, we, leave, we read from Malachim. Toysvis says, maybe it comes from Rav Haigoin. Rav Haigoin was the one who instituted that we should read from Yeshua. He says, Chida, why do we read from Yeshua? What's the reason we read from Yeshua? Because since we just finished the Chumash, so imagine a guy, he just finished the whole Chumash. Every Friday night, he's up late learning Chumash and Rashi. He wakes up early Shabbos morning to learn Chumash and Rashi. Finally, he's done with Vizay Sabracha. He says, I want, a, I want a breather, I want a little vacation. Satan says, ah, Rabban Shalom, look, he's done. He's, not, he's never going to learn Navi. He's never going to get into the Navim. So the second we stop learning Chumash, we immediately start the Navim as the Haftorah to show, show Rabban Shalom. We're not stopping. We're going straight into the Navim. Just because we learned the entire Chumash and we know it well, we're going into the next subject. The same reason to quiet the Kitrug of the Satan. We've said this over many times. I saw this in the name of the stipler. This year, I have it in the name of Mahari Toisig, the Rav of Matastarf. When you call up the Chasen Taira, the Lushan is, Maher Amoid 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 Rebbe Ploini Ben Ploini. Now, first of all, this is a Chidosh. Why do we say Amoid, Amoid, Amoid? Not every Chas and Torah is hard of hearing. Why do we have to say Amoid, Amoid? No, normally, you say, what's your name? Abrami. Ben. Ben Yaman Eliezer. Ben Abrami? Ben Yaman Eliezer. Ben Yaman Eliezer. Ya, Amoid. Ben Abram. Ben Yaman Eliezer. I only have to say it one time. Then you, you hear. What most people, you know, in the middle of davening, when they hear their name, you know, people like, they jolt. They, what, what, who called me? You know, where do I, what do I need to do? Yeah, you don't have to call a guy three times. What's the shot we say? Amoid, amoid, amoid. Why do we say amoid three times? It's very interesting. What's the halacha if somebody asks you to daven for the Amr? So the Gemara says, the first time, you, say, you, you demur, you demur. The second time, you start shifting, shuffling. You know, people have the moves down there. They have like a whole dance, right? The third time, you already start walking to the, to the Amr. Not by us. If I ask you, it means we need somebody to get up there, you know? <laughs> but that means emergency, SOS, you know? But um, third time, you got to go. But the first time, you demur. The second time, you demur. Why? Because it, it, it's not supposed to look like, you know, you've been waiting to do this your whole life, you know? Since the moment you were born, you've been waiting for this moment. Like, you know, you show it's okay, somebody else could do it. You're not supposed to, you're not supposed to agree right away. So what's the shot by an aliyah? The halach is, if you get an aliyah, you're not allowed to, uh, 
you're not allowed to turn it down. The Gemara and Bracha says there are three things that shorten a person's life. One of them is if they offer you an Aliyah and you don't want to take it. So Benai Aliyah, you have to take it right away. Why? Because an Aliyah is not such a big covet. Davening for the Amr is it's just the opposite. People think an Aliyah is a big covet, and davening for the Amr, davening for the Amr is a bigger covet. You know what? Maybe we should start selling <laughs> davening for the Amr. Yeah? So davening for the Amr is a big covet. You're supposed to turn it down. Masha'in Kain, Masha'in Kain, an Aliyah is not such a big covet, so you go up right away. But not Chas and Taira. You know, the Gemara tells us, in Baba Basra Dav Tesvav, the last eight psukim, Yachid Koyre Yoisam. Yachid Koyre Yoisam. Says the Mordechai, what does it mean, Yachid Koyre Yoisam? It means, Miyuchad Shebe'ida. A Tamar Chacham gets called up for the Chasan Taira. So it's a covet. So you need to say, no, no, thank you. So therefore, we say, Amoid, 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 because we're ready, we're ready know that the first Amoy, the guy's going to turn it down. The second Amoy, the guy's going to turn it down. The third Amoy, the guy's going to turn it down. We say Amoy, Amoy, Amoy three times to fulfill the halacha that you need to turn down three times a matter of covet. Now we're going to see, what's the Iker? Chasen Torah or Chasen Bereshis? This is Chasen Bereshis. Only in America, we'll see, the rabbis have to take chasen Torah, otherwise people are going to think Torah is not important. But be'ikr, chasen Bereshis is more important. We'll see why. Now, why do we say by chasen Torah, maher, I'm sorry, by chasen Torah we say amayr, amayr, amayr. By chasen Bereshis we say maher, maher. What's the hurry? The hurry is, we just finished the Torah. You know who is invited to chasen Bereshis? The Satan. The Satan's coming. You just finished, you just said chazak, chazak, venis chazak, open the door, in walks the Satan. The Satan says, oh, they just finished, now they're going to have a whole big Kiddush, and they're going to forget about the Torah, they're not going to wake up until Pashas Chai Yisara. So in order to squelch the Satan, we do Maher, quickly, get the Chasen Bereshis going, before the Satan comes to be Makatreg. Now, by the Svardim, the Menorah Hamar brings, not only would they start Bereshis right away, not only would they say Maher, not only would they learn Yeshua, they began to learn Mishnah right after Chos and Bereshis, they began to learn the Mishnayis. Why? So it's suggested in Sefer Gyoni Halacha for the very same reason. You just finished Tar Shabbat Sav. You're afraid the Sultan's going to say, okay, they finished Tar Shabbat Sav, but they'll never open up a Mishnah, they'll never open up a Gemara. So right after, we immediately start with the Mishnayis. Now, how does davening begin? What's the first thing in part of davening? Many people say, Adoin Elam. Why do we start davening with Adoin Elam? One of the reasons is, because whenever you say Hashem's name, you're supposed to think, when you say Aleph Da'an Nun Yod, that Hashem is the master of the whole world. And whenever you say uh, Hashem Havaya, you're supposed to think, Haya Haya The only thing is, it's hard, not everybody is able to think that every time they say the name of Hashem. So when you say Adoi Noilam, what you're doing is you're saying, every time I say the Shem Adonos, I want to be Mechavein, that Hashem is the master of the whole world. And every time I say the Shem Avaya, I want to be Mechavein, Haya Haiva Viya. It's like a stipulation in the beginning of the davening that all the Shem I say throughout the tefillah should be al this Kavana. And how does davening end? Davening ends with Adoi Noilam. Many shows that on Shabbos at least, or on Rosh Hashanah, they, they finished with Adoi Noilam. So one of the Mepharshim on the, on the Mate Ephraim explains, because we're showing the Rebun Islam, we just finished davening! You know who shows up in the shul right when davening is over? <coughs> the Satan's there. Satan said, okay, they daven Shachras. Lots of luck if you ever see this guy again. So we start from the beginning. We say Rebun Islam, even though we finished, Adoy Noilam! We're right at the beginning. We're, gonna, we're get, getting right back to it. So this is an idea we find in Simchas Torah, but we find throughout the year. In fact, there's a very holy sefer. It's called Heads and Tails. You ever hear that sefer? Sefer HaKadosh. It's on the sheet, number 11. Heads and Tails. Naftali, who wrote Heads and Tails? You know, you, you, you do know. Who wrote Heads and Tails? It's by your night table. Rabbi Beryl Wine. Rabbi Wine. There's a nice picture of a peacock on it. Stories. So he said that he met the Panovich in the 1950s. 
And he asked the Panavacharav, Panavacharav, how come every time you're about to build the yeshiva and you're about to finish the yeshiva, before you even complete the job, you already start a new project. Doesn't it make sense? Finish project A, take a breather, and then go to project B. Why do you always start new projects before you, you finish the last one? Says upon a Panavacharav, whenever you finish a project, they look down on you from heaven, and they say, all right, this guy is done. You know, they say, uh, you know, Gavriel, go get him. It's time for him to go. You know, he's done. He's finished. Go get him. It's never good to be finished with something. You need to be always in the middle of something. It's never a good idea to be complete the job. So the Panavich Rav says, whenever I'm about to finish, I always start something new. This way, when they look down from heaven, they say, oh, he's still in the middle of something. You know, let off. Let him finish what he's up to. So that's the first Indian. The first Indian is that whenever we, start, we finish something, whether it's the Zayis HaBracha, and we start Bereshus, whether it's Tar Shabbat Sav, and we start Nevi'im, whether it's Tar Shabbat Sav, we start Mishnah, whether it's Davening, and we start again from Adon Elam, we always go back to the beginning. That's the first approach. This is something that we've uh, learned many times. But here's the Chiddush. Chiddush is like this. There's another Indian. The Indian is, when you get an Aliyah, what are you supposed to do when you get an Aliyah? You're supposed to hold on to the Atzei Chaim. It's a halacha. You have to hold on to the Atzei Chaim. Why do you have to hold on to the Atzei Chaim? The Ramah says, not only do you hold on to the Atzei Chaim, when you finish getting the Aliyah, what do we tell the Oila? Chazak. Ashkenazim made up some kind of mishkaba, non lang non communicable grunt that was goich, shkoich. I don't know what, yeah, you, know, you should be strong. You tell the guy chazak, that's a halacha. What the grunt is exactly, it's alpi kabbalah exactly, you know. <laughs> but you're supposed to tell the guy alpi halacha for Ashkenazim, chazak, chazak, be strong. Why? Because Moshe Rabbeinu told Yeshua, rak chazak, in fact, the Mepharshim say, the Gemara Bracha says, Arba Tzrichim Chizuk. There are four things that always need Chizuk. One of them is Torah. Torah always needs Chizuk. So when you get an Ali, you have to hold on to the Atzei Chaim. Don't hold on like a, a weakling. Now, like people say, Shalom Aleichem. Don't give me a hand. Feel like this. What, what, the hand's not working? Squeeze! You're supposed to squeeze the guy's hand. You give him a handshake. Be a firm handshake. So don't hold on the Atzei Chaim like we're not sure whether you have a pulse or not. You need to hold it with st strong. Chazak! When you, when you give a handshake, right? Squeeze, tough, strong. No, by the way, Rabbi Isaac Shar says, when you hold someone's hand on some Chastayra, you should be mechavin to mekayim the mitzvah of avas yisra, avas reyim. Otherwise, why are you holding the guy's hand? Right? I'm saying you're holding that because you want to show friendship on Simchas Torah. So why don't you be mechavein to mekayim the mitzvah of avas reyim when you hold their hand? If you're holding it like, you know, Baruch Hashem, your heart is pumping, you're alive, you're not, a, you're not in a hospital bed, squeeze the guy's hand until he tells, okay, enough, relax, pal, you know? But when you hold the Sefer Torah, chazak ve'ematz, there are four things that need chizuk. <laughs> And one of them is tefillah. How do we know tefillah needs chizuk? Shenemar. Kaveh al Hashem. Chazak v'yamis libecha v'kaveh al Hashem. What do we learn from here? From here we see that the way to be mechazek something is that when you finish something, you start it again. How do you show chizuk in something? The way you show chizuk in an Indian is that whenever you're done, you start again. Otherwise, you're weakening, you're slackening. The only way to mechazek is kaveh el Hashem, chazak v'yamzeh v'kaveh Hashem. Why do we say adoin elam after davening? Not just because you finish, so the sultan's going to say, hey, this guy's done, we'll never see him again. We are showing we're being mechazek in tefillah. We just finished the whole davening and we're starting from the beginning. That shows we're being mechazek in our tefillah. The way to show chizuk is when you complete, you start again. So we're finishing B'zoi Sabracha. How do we show we're being mechazek in Torah? We finished, and the second we finish, we start again. It's not just because otherwise the satan's <laughs> going to come and say, you know, oh, you know, he's done, he'll never do anything. Else. It's a way of being mechazek ourselves. Okay, that's the second nekuda. But here's the main thing. 
What's the source of Siam? Shlomo HaMelech was given what? A lave of Chachma. In the Sefer Hare Kedem, he brings that Rav Salvechik said in the name of his father, Rav Chaim Salvechik's son, that from this Medrash you see a very important Kuda. You see that Shlomo HaMelech did not make a Mishta because he finished something, because he actually didn't learn anything. He made a siyum because Rebbe Hashem gave him a lev chacham v'navayin. And from there we derive that when you finish the Torah, you should make a siyum. Must be the simcha of finishing the Zayis HaBracha is not that you finished something in Torah. Now that you finished Chamisha Chamshay Torah, you've acquired a lev chacham. You've acquired understanding. You've, we, you've acquired insight into Torah. You've acquired new levels of appreciation of Torah. And what's the simcha? The simcha of finishing the Torah is Rebbe Hashem, I just went through from Bereshus of Zoy Sabracha. You've granted me new understanding. I now am so besimcha that I could do what? This time I could, really, I could learn it now and understand it. The simcha of a siyum is not the simcha that you completed it. The simcha is now you have new understanding, now you could try to understand it for real. It has nothing to do with what you did in the past. It is about what you're going to do with the chachma you've gained from learning it this past time. That's a big chiddush, but now we understand how you could learn out simcha from Shlomo HaMelech, because Shlomo didn't finish anything. If the simcha of a siyum is the simcha of completion, Shlomo didn't complete anything. The simcha is not the simcha of completion, the simcha is the acquisition of chachma to be able to, for this time, for real understand the Torah. So if you had this chus now to learn from Bereshus of Zayis HaBracha, you probably learned a thing or two about Torah. Maybe you learned how to read a Rashi better. Maybe you learned how to read a Ramban or an Arachayim HaKadosh. Or maybe now you have the storyline clearer so that this time you could analyze better. You know, the Gemara says a great principle. It's called Ligmar Vehadar Lizbar. You know, very often people, you know, they learn the whole, they learn two blot. They spend years learning two blot. So, Reb Chaim Brisker would say, in order to know the whole Shas, you need to learn one blot. If you learn one blot well, you'll know the whole shas. And the Natsiv would say, you need to learn the whole shas to be able to know one blot. And they're both true. There's a truth to both of them. But sometimes you need to get the whole context and the main storyline and the main details. And once you have sort of the general principles, then you could dig in. So the simcha of a siyum is now, you know, I put in a lot of hard work and now I finally finished. No, that's not the, si the simcha. The simcha is, I put in a, hard, a lot of hard work. I completed the whole thing. I acquired a lev chachma. Now I can understand it for real. So the simcha is not in the completion, it's in the start. It's in the start. So the reason we start Bereshis, the Sefer Hare Kedem brings, it's not because only the Satan's going to prosecute us the second we stop. Oh, he'll never learn anything else. That's also true. That's not the Nakuda. It's not only because the way we show chizuk in learning is by doing it again. That's also true. The Nakuda is the simcha of completion, is the lev chachma that you acquire, that now you can learn it for real. Now we understand why we have to start Bereshis right away. The whole tachlis of finishing is for the next round. <coughs> so what's the Iker? Chasen Taira or Chasen Bereshis? The Iker is Chasen Bereshis. Shloimai HaMelech was a Chasen Taira or a Chasen Bereshis? Chasen Bereshis. He didn't finish anything. But now he has a Lev Chachma to understand a new round of Taira. Rak Ba'amerika, Mibnei Kavayda Taira, Shelo Yehei Keser Chasen Taira, Munach Karen Zavis, what are people going to say if, the, if the, everyone gets the, the chas and bracious and the keser Torah goes to... So they give it to the rabbi and everybody thinks we're honoring the Torah. But the main simcha is chas and bracious. I don't know, maybe we have to switch things up this year, you know? So here we are. We're headed toward v'zoy sabracha. And this is a different understanding of a, of a siyam. 
I think until now we would always assume the Simcha Vasiyam is the Simcha of the accomplishment. No, it's the Simcha of future accomplishment. You know, the story goes, Chidush Arim saw two guys dancing. They were both dancing with full Heslavos. And the Chidush Arim said, Ruvain, Shimon. Shimon was dancing. Ruvain was dancing. I'm not going to use the name because we have Ruvains here. We have Shimon. We're going to use, we're going to use Fivel and Mendel. Okay? They're both that, that, uh, dancing. Fivel and Mendel. Fivel was a much, we have Fivels also. What are we going to do? Fivel was a bigger Tamil Chacham. Fivel was dancing, dancing, dancing. And all the Tamidim thought Fivel would go on all night. Fivel knew Babli, Yushalmi, Baalpeh. Mendel hardly knew anything. And the Chidush Arim said, Fivel's going to tire before Mendel tires. Sure enough, Fivel tired out, and Mendel, who's a shtikal amaretz, was going, 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 going. So they said, Rebbe, how did you know that Mendel was still going? He says, because Fivel is learned a lot this year. He's dancing because of everything he accomplished. What he accomplished is finite. So his dancing was finite. Mendel is dancing because now that he learned the Bissell, he's excited about all the things that he plans on learning for the upcoming year. And that's infinite. What his plans are, those are infinite. So that's the Simcha Vasiyam. The Simcha Vasiyam is not past achievement, it's the Lev Chachma that you acquire to be able to start a new cycle of Bereshis. So whatever you've learned, now don't fall behind right away. This year it's very easy to fall behind Bereshis. Bereshis, you got one night. Soon as Simcha's Torah is over, you got to hit the books, you got to hit the Bereshis. Bereshis, whatever we did this past year, the Iker Simcha is what we're going to do with our newfound knowledge. So what does this have to do with Hoshana Rabbah? We know that on Sukkis, we're Nidoin Alamayim. We're judged on water. But the Iker, the main judgment of water, takes place on Hoshana Rabbah. The Sfas Emes writes in many Mekoymois that when Chazal say that on Sukkis we're judged on water, he says, Iker hakavana al ha The judgment is on the Taira. Now what does it mean the judgment is on the Taira? Aren't we judged on Taira on Shavuos? Isn't there an idea? We're judged on Peroi Ilan. We're judged what we could accomplish in learning on Shavuos. What does it mean on Sukkot we're judged on water? See, there are two different things. On Sukkot the judgment is, what do we plan on doing this year? What are our plans? What are our aspirations? What do we hope for in this coming year in terms of Limanat Torah? It comes out, if the Iker Din of Sukkot is Al HaMayim, which is Torah, and the Iker Din on Mayim is Hashanah Rabbah, tomorrow morning, means all the tefillahs you're going to say for Mayim, what do you think? You're going you're gonna to look up the weather? What's the annual precipitation this year as opposed to last year? The water levels? All the tefillahs of Hashanah, 22 times 7. All the Hashanahs that we're going to cry out. <coughs> Hashanah, Tsa'aka, is all for Torah. It's all displaying our thirst for Torah for the upcoming year. It's a hakdama to Simchas Torah. Simchas Torah is a celebration of now that we finish the Torah, we have a lev chachma, we have great plans for the upcoming year. Hashan Rab is the preparation for it. Are these are tefillahs tsaaka mitoch simcha of what we would like to accomplish in the upcoming year. This is the limud from Shloimei Hamelach. So when we finish v'zois habracha and we start Bereshis. It's not only because we're afraid of the prosecution of the Satan. It's not only we want to be mechazek ourselves. We're showing the main simcha of finishing B'zayi Sabracha is to learn Bereshis. The main simcha of finishing B'zayi Sabracha is to learn Sefer Yeshua. So we start the Nevi'im. The main simcha of finishing B'zayi Sabracha is to learn the Mishnah. The main simcha is to continue in our quest for Limana Torah. So this is the Yisoid of the Nakuda of Simcha of Simcha's Torah and Hoshana Rabbah is a great hachana for that. All the tefillahs of Hoshana Rabbah are tefillahs for what we are mispelled. The Rebbein Shem should give us siyata deshmaya to be able to learn in the upcoming year and we should, be, we should all be zoicha. Kishem shasiyamnu chamishe chum she Torah May Hashem give us siyata deshmaya lahaschil ulasayim svarim acherim more 
Taira, more Nevi'im, more Mishnah, more Gemara, more Havanas HaTaira. And Bezos Hashem, we should be Zoycha, Bezchus HaTaira, Oira Chiam and Bimina, Usmaila, Oisha Bekavayd, wishing everyone a Gitin Kvitol, a Piska Taiva, and we should all be Zoycha, to Gemar Chasima Taiva, a Gad Yamtiv, Chakash of Sameach, Shkayach. Be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be-be